All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode here of the Lure Lab Podcast. And I'm your host, Andrew Full. And today we have Bailey and Adam joining us again. Um, what's going on, guys? Oh, man, another episode. And it's one that uh, this is an interesting one because it's one that is so good in the fall, but I feel like it's so good all around the entire year, but it just excels in the fall. Yeah, and there's like certain conditions that make it exceed at times over others. And yeah, it's fun. I, I thoroughly enjoy throwing this bait. It is a technique that I think is a little bit of a dying breed for no reason at all. And I think yeah. that, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of money won on this thing. A Still, lot. and not really talked and about. We're talking about crazy. someone here that made 10K on this thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, the I'm, only reason I am fishing, so this this episode is probably going to air the week that I'm fishing the Hobie TOC, the Top 50 Championship. The only reason I am there is because of a spinnerbait. Yeah. Toledo Bend, spinnerbait. You follow, won it on a spinnerbait. Susquehanna cashed a Top 20 on a spinnerbait. Like, Holy, like, if that doesn't tell you to pick up a spinnerbait, folks, I yeah. don't know what else. Throw a I, I, that's like probably the one bait that I think I've caught big fish on every single possible weather condition time of year that I've ever fished. Yeah. It, it just is straight juice, up catches fish. That is like, save that right there. Like, let's go clip it. Yeah. End the episode. We're good. We're getting art of spinnerbait fishing, right? It, it's basically a forgotten art of bass fishing is spinnerbait fishing. Some guys like even in tournaments. Now I just broke into what we're talking about. Spinnerbaits. So Pardon me there, but uh, oh, we've already a... talked about it. Oh, no, yeah, we already yeah. opened it up, buddy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> ba sorry. Bailey said it. Yeah, you're right. My well, bad. sorry, bud. Yeah, just fog in here. Don't mind me. But yeah, <laughs> spinner rates. Talking about fall time specifically, which is one of my favorite times of throat, and I think it's probably your guys's favorite time too, because you just cover water, nastiest conditions, and get them to bite it. Usually, especially in the fall as temps are dropping etc so let's dive right in what is your favorite spinner rate deacon lead us off okay well um this might be followed up by some of you guys just because i oh gosh so for a while i was not a spinner bait guy to be honest with you because i could never find the right one i felt like i would just buy spinner baits because someone was like hey catch them on this kind of a color um I knew I always liked a thin wire on my spinnerbait. And so the accent spinnerbaits are fantastic. Um, real thin wire. Of course, they make willow blades, Colorado blades, all your kind of stuff. In the, in the fall, I'm generally reaching for a willow blade. Again, I'm going with that smaller profile and a natural shad kind of color. Um, silver blades are what I like, especially in sunshine. And... The biggest thing for me with this spinner bait is the thin wire gives you that extra wobble. I like to think when I'm going up on bigger gizzard shads, I'm going to a bigger blade like this one here. That's going to be a, a bigger profile in that bigger shad situation. I like a three eighths or a half ounce spinner bait a lot of the time in the fall with a willow blade. And that gives you the smaller the blade, the faster you can reel that spinner bait. Um, and I mean fast, and that's what I like to do in the fall is I like to burn that spinner bait with a small blade. It doesn't have very much drag. It's not just going, um, to me, when I go to a bigger blade, I'm thumping and that's kind of more of my springtime situation. So I like a smaller blade that I can burn the heavier, the spinner bait with smaller blades, the lower, or the faster you can burn that bait without it coming out of the water. Right. And doing that one flick out of the water which can be very effective in the fall because fish are chasing bait to the surface shatter wounded on top of the surface that kind of a situation but that's what i like i am pretty exclusive when it comes to spinner baits if i'm not going painted blades if i'm not doing something different i am going to throw an accent spinner bait and that's what i like doing in the fall as well yeah spinner bait talk it, i just i want to go largemouth fishing right now and throw a spinner bait bailey you Go ahead. What do you what do you like? I like Deacon. 
Uh, I am. <laughs> you you, you like you man? Man? No, nice. Hey, I like you too, man. <laughs> I, okay, I said a like, but okay. It's oh, fine. I thought you we'll said I that. like. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll roll with that. Similar <laughs> to Deacon. Okay, I'll rephrase. <laughs> uh, I also like the accent spinnerbait, you bunch of jerks. Um, I have two full giant spinnerbait boxes full of these suckers. and it's, Is that a it, copper blade? I think it's oh, just, that's oh, just, it's gold. just oh, almost it's silver. Like, yeah, the light did. Almost. The light. Oh. I was like, "Wow, copper!" I've never. I don't think I've seen many copper blades. That was cool. That it was. I I straight up just went and bought five of every single possible size and pattern that they have. I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, um, and it, it's for a couple of reasons. Um, it's one where there, there's a couple spinner baits I'll say that are good, like straight out of the package that are super consistent that have the lighter wire that gets you kind of that, you know, flexibility, but also the action you want, but also isn't going to break in five fish. Um, I'll say one other spinner bait that I own that I do like in specific cases, more when you talk, we're talking about like one ounces is strike King. Uh, and it's actually a pretty good budget spinner bait when you don't want to pay that much money. Um, but for, for accent, it's one that uh, for me, there's, there's a couple spinner baits where like that hook, like when we were talking here, that hook can actually like flex where this one flexes a little bit, but it's, it's very, when you were talking about that shank, the shank doesn't move. So it's kind of almost got like that flipping style hook in that spinner bait. So once you, when you pin them, this, I mean, it's a Gamagatsu. When you pin them, they ain't going anywhere. Uh, it's one that even when you get it a little bit warped, it's still going to run true, especially with a trailer. Um, and just so the, the, I kind of am a big fan of just the simple head style that they come with. I think it's just for some reason it's one that I think runs true more than others. Uh, and I think for that, it really just built a confidence. Um, and I have the one that I won, the Hobie BOS from Ufala hanging on the trophy over there. And I think that that gave me enough conf- oh, that gave me enough confidence as well uh, to keep throwing accent. <laughs> What one one thing it might be that head style. Um, if you notice on it, it's not like arrow pointed or anything. It's like cylindrical. Yeah, exactly. So, I think turn it sideways now. I think that a lot of that weight is so centered in one spot that I think it helps. Like you're saying, because you know it's a thin wire spinner bait. That thing's gonna bend when you have a three, four, five pounder on there. It helps it keep balance. Oh, they're gonna mangle so it. Does the body down as you're reeling it. Mm-hmm. keeps that weight centered and, and everything going but yeah yeah that's a great point oh yeah i am not i love spinnerbait fishing i'm not a spinnerbait aficionado by any means but the one spinnerbait that i truly do love um and it's only because of the blades is a war eagle and um the biggest thing with a war eagle for me is the fact that it casts really well it has that thin wire to it so it's flexy but also talking about with Bailey and the hook, if you try to flex this hook, it does not move worth uh it's it's got a really stout like O'Shaughnessy style spinnerbait hook to it. Um, but the biggest thing to me is the blades when I throw spinnerbait in the fall. I'm usually throwing it in the nastiest weather days, and I want something that's gonna refract a lot of light. So I really like a hammer blade. For both of them, top and bottom, the top one on the War Eagle is always a smaller blade. Sometimes you'll get some spinnerbait companies where the willow blades are the same. That causes a lot of lift. Um, And the way that this one is, it's a cone head, but that helps keep the balance on it level because they add a lot of weight actually back into the hook keeper on the spinnerbait to kind of help balance it out as you're retrieving it. But as we go here further... I think there's a couple things you can do to a spinnerbait to help balance it out and keep it down in the water column as well. Um, I guess I'll jump right into it and we'll talk about it now. And that I like to throw a fluke on the back of mine. I'm not a trailer hook guy. I never have been, but I don't want a boot tail because the boot tail is going to cause it to rise the faster you reel it. So I always just go to a straight fluke to m- imitate bait fish and that allows it to almost center out that center out the gravity on your spinner bait so that it stays parallel and perfect as you reel it back to your boat in high speeds. Do you guys like trailers on your spinner baits? 
I I can't typically fish one ever without a trailer. Um, I will give one argument for trailer hooks, and that is if you find, especially when it's, say, a tough fishery, whether it's a tournament or not, uh, and you're finding that sometimes spinnerbaits, the one thing I love about spinnerbait is that I have, I feel like it's the one bait that even when it can be extremely tough can get you out of the hole because it attracts a lot of attention mm -hmm. can provoke fish pretty easily. I like a, 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 a rig in a sense. Um, and that there's sometimes where they short strike the heck out of this thing and you might be getting bumped and you can tell that they're bass. That might be the one time where you either maybe change the trailer, change color, but could be a time where you go to a trailer hook. And there's a bunch of times where I th I'm, I'm sure all three of us have thrown trailer hooks on spinners before and you've gotten them good and it's only on the trailer hook and you're like, okay, maybe that's why I throw a trailer hook. But most of the time I don't like that because I think it gets in the way um, because especially that trailer is really a great pinpoint for these fish and that helps them get it. I mean, I, I don't know many fish that I've lost on a spinner bait when throwing a trailer. My, I love a boot tail personally. Uh, mm -hmm. I am a big rage swimmer guy cause they're durable swim, uh, boot tails. Uh, the one thing about accent I'll say is there's not a wire keeper on it. So mm. super glue is your best friend. Um, don't I get the skirt. What? But don't get the skirt when you're super gluing. Like right. Make sure yeah. that you're not going to like get anything anywhere else. Yeah, you get right, right where it starts to widen out on that hook. You get a little bit up here on that white, and you should be good. Just put a little dab. You'll be all right. Um, but beyond that, I mean, the other trailer that I throw is a, I think it's Z-Man Streaks, I think it's called. I think it's a streaks. It's got the bulbous tail on it. It's basically like a like a Strike King yeah, caffeine no, no. chad, but in Elastec, so you can run through a whole bunch of them. I'm a big boot tail guy for the pr uh, the primary reason that when I'm fishing a spinnerbait, I'm fishing specific shallow targeted cover. And I'm not I'm not bombing this. I'm making very precise short casts, and I just Let's think boot tail is just a bigger profile in my eyes. Yeah, keep it up. Yep, I like it, Deacon. Yeah, I think two things. So for me, um, most of the time on a trailer, same deal. I'm throwing a paddle tail. I have listened to and and have used it specifically with chatter baits, but also have messed around with the spinner baits. Um, the tactical bassin guys talking about flipping that Kai Tech over or whatever swim bait you're using, that tail rhythm's a lot faster upside down. So if you're burning a spinner bait, something to try. I do it with every chatter bait um, if I'm throwing a boot tail on the back of it because generally that's moving quicker with that front blade. But anyways, back to spinner baits. I'm either going to be doing that or kind of like your, um, what Andy's talking about, a fluke style trailer. If I'm not wanting as much action on the back of the spinner bait, I generally keep my swim bait pretty short on there. I'm not super particular on Kai Tech, Rage Tail. Really, to me, if it's a, if it's a boot tail trailer that is, that is going back and forth and is smaller on that, that on there, that's what I like. Cause I don't want it to be super long to where that fish maybe is targeting it and misses it and just grabs the tail end or something on the hook perspective, 85, 90% of the time I am not throwing a trailer hook. And it's the same reason exactly um, with what Bailey's saying is I feel like a traditional spinner bait trailer hook, the one with the rubber that goes in between can get in the way when a fish absolutely smashes it. I feel like every once in a while you'll get one where you're like, how did I not get that fish to where maybe it um, almost is that, blocker for getting that other hook and you might still get them with that trailer hook that is a personal preference i think to something to feel out is if in a tournament situation if you're practicing and getting bit on a spinner bait and seeing how well those fish are getting it like if they are smoking it i don't think there's any need to even consider a trailer hook in my eyes the one thing that i will say and i don't know who had said this but something that i have messed with and does seem to work well for me the Traditional, and I wish I had some here. Oh, I might. One second. The traditional trailer hook spinnerbait situation where there's a piece of rubber that goes through your hook. There we go. I do. All right. So rather than going with your traditional trailer hook situation where there's that piece of rubber that then goes on to the spinnerbait, your spinnerbait hook itself, Take that off, that rubber piece, run a trailer hook that has nothing on the back of it, 
put that piece of rubber above that hook so where it can't it it's just a piece of rubber but basically to where it can't come back off the other spinnerbait hook so that it is completely free swinging and therefore like when a fish crushes something it may not block itself i think with that rubber that's something that that in my head messes with it but again not something i particularly look at when i am throwing a trailer i don't like it it can get in the way um, if you are going to run a trailer like a kai tech or some sort of swim bait on the back you can just take that trailer hook and put it above it to where it's not necessarily going to hit that tail but yeah. anyways those are my thoughts those are all great points uh yeah i i don't think I've thrown a trailer hook in probably 10 or 12 years since like the first time I ever threw a spinnerbait and I just don't like them. Personally, I feel if, if they're going to eat a spinnerbait, they usually eat it really well. And if they're swiping at it and you're missing them, you can probably pick up a chatterbait or a square bill and catch those fish in the same areas. So, but uh, real quick, what is your setup for throwing a spinnerbait? Andy, the, one one thing, Andy, with that exact statement, dude. I think there was an old timer one time that told me this. <laughs> like, I think it was on Grand Lake too in Oklahoma or something. Where like, you know, spinnerbait's king, right? And it was like, we we're talking about trailer, and, and they might have been even referring to like a Jason Christian. And I was like, they're either gonna get it or they're not. Like, they're either gonna eat it or they're not. There's yeah. no point in worrying about this like half hooked one. It's like they're gonna get it or they're not. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like too with like a trailer hook, a lot of times. It's hook like very rarely does that trailer hook get in their mouth. It's always like on the outside of the face because yeah. they just swipe and I'm, I'm like that. I might as well put a treble hook on as a trailer hook at that point because <laughs> I'm more likely to catch that fish if it swipes at it. Yeah, with a single hook, it's one yeah. angle that it can yeah. get in their mouth. Yeah, it just that the whole idea of it now doesn't make sense to me. And people are like, put a trailer hook on. I'm like, well, I just went to a chatterbait and I started catching them. So I don't care. <laughs> so, like but it. what is your favorite setup? Like rod rear line. Go ahead, Bailey. Uh, I'd say for how I like to fish a spinner bait. So tight cover, precise target, like very specific casts. Um, what I'm using is, um, you can, this rod, this rod specs are universal, but it's actually a brand new rod to Abu Garcia that I started using back at the Susquehanna river event. Uh, it's a Abu Garcia pro series rod. It's the Adrian Avena spinnerbait rod. It's a six ten, medium, heavy, fast. Uh, and I have an Abu Garcia, uh, Revo SX. So it's a seven, three to one. And I have 20 pound fluoro. Nice. 20. 20 crack them and go hit them and don't stop really <laughs> i like it flip them on in deacon man i i have such a weird obsession with this one rod and it is not like i am someone as you guys know i have a bunch of different rods which isn't right like i'm at kind of the stage in fishing where i should be like all right this is the one rod company that i like stuck with i'm like nah man like i was there for 10 years rod. man Dude, I was yeah. there for 10 like, years. That is, I don't know what it is about me, but this is the only lose rod I have. And I have three of them because for whatever reason, throwing a spinner bait, I like it for chatter bait and too. anything with a moving bait. I can cast this rod so well targeted. It's very lightweight and very, uh, it, it, I love it for moving baits and it's a lose custom light and it's a seven, three, um, it's a medium heavy, but it is pretty moderate. It's not, I wouldn't say it's not like a moderate, like almost like a crankbait rod, but it's got a lot of play in that rod, especially in that tip. And it makes, that's why it's so accurate casting. Like if you're throwing at lay downs or something and skipping baits can be fantastic with it, but it is my spinnerbait rod of choice. And, um, again, I don't even know if they make it anymore because for a while there, it was kind of like on and off and they make made, I think they made a new variation, which may have the same blank, but it's that typical white, uh, gray split grip lose custom light rod. That seven, three, one is phenomenal for throwing a spinner bait. I'm more of like a 15 pound test guy. Um, I'm running a faster gear ratio reel seven to three generally most of the time. And, uh, that's my, uh, my spinner bait setup. I love it. I um 
Rot line and reel. So seven three, seven five, seven one to one are all good spinner bait reels in my opinion, because you can speed up, you can slow down, you can do different things. I have I am also right there with you, 15 pound test. Usually when I'm throwing a spinner bait though, I'm just covering water. So I'm like on big flats or throwing it against like paralleling banks. Sometimes I'll throw it around docks, but I'm not throwing it up underneath. Rods, I haven't found a favorite spinning like casting rod. I love anything that's like a seven foot medium, medium heavy. Cause one, I can cast it really far, but two, I can also make accurate pinpoint short cast with it to pick up our cover. Um, one alpha angler rod. I do like, which is weird. And uh, it's a top hammer. So it's a top water rod. So it's more parabolic, but I found that I was able to cast like a three eighth ounce war Eagle with it really accurately around docks. And I had, plenty enough backbone to drive hooks home to get the fish in so that's one spinnerbait rod i like right now i tend to like it on a little bit lighter side of the rod just because like the way i set the hook i feel like it absorbs the hook set better and uh i'm able to still drive the hook home fine thank you so, yeah any other points you guys want to add in here before we wrap up the spinnerbait episode I think the spinner bait is probably one of the easiest baits if you're an entry level fisherman yeah. to fish and catch fish and is one of the easiest baits in my mind to catch fish with a from a setup. Whereas we have episodes where we literally, you know, last week, um, you know, we talked about crankbait fishing and the week before that we talked about, you know, small mouth with, with drop shotting specific hooks. That can be some very nitpicky stuff, whereas a spinner bait is like is you got a universal rod, like this is like the staple seven foot medium, medium heavy rod that you can pick up, grab a spinner bait, and just about anywhere in the country you'll catch a bass. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, and and it is like the staple of bass fishing, right? When you see a guy yeah. throwing a freaking spinner bait, you're like, man, that's Bill Dance. Like that's it. Like that is Rick Lund, St. John's River. It still works so <laughs> damn good. Pistol yeah. grip, one hand cast, roll casters. Yeah. Yeah. There's a yeah. seven. Yeah. Like oh, great yeah. seven. Just yep. wild. It just gets bit. Like some of my favorite Bassmaster episodes I ever watched, and like live is when they're on that crazy spinnerbait bike because they just eat it so hard every time. Heck yeah. So yeah. But uh anyways, we here always want to say thank you to everyone who tunes in to every week's episode of the Lure Lab. Um, we greatly appreciate it. And if you are tuning in on YouTube, please leave a comment below of your favorite spinnerbait. Hit the subscribe button and throw us up a thumbs up. A thumbs up. Jeez, tongue twisting myself. <laughs> and then if you're listening on MP3, Apple, Spotify, whichever is your choice, please leave us a review so we can help be seen to other fishermen and fisher people, fisher women who love the sport of fishing so we can give our humble advice to them and hopefully it helps catch you a few more fish but anyways we look forward to seeing everyone next week on our blade bait episode that we have coming up and we will see you guys then